You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme, a world-first scheme offsetting greenhouse gas emissions by reducing the amount of methane cows produce. It's been confirmed China's president will attend a climate change summit with French and German leaders tomorrow as John Kerry continues his visit to Shanghai. And using the power of our oceans to generate clean energy. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those coming up with the solutions. And we aim to take you to the heart of the climate crisis, explain the data driving the changes that are already affecting us, but also show you just how far we've come. Well, coming up, we'll be looking at whether a diplomatic storm is brewing in U US China relations after it's confirmed the Chinese president will attend a climate summit hosted by the French tomorrow. And how Matchbox is bringing its toy cars up to date with an eco friendly makeover. But first, the world's first carbon credits for reducing emissions from cows have been launched. Carbon credits, or offsetting, is the practice of reducing CO2 or other greenhouse gas emissions made in one area to compensate for emissions elsewhere. This could be by planting trees when you take a flight, for example, or now through paying for a new cattle food supplement. Because cows play a big part in climate change. Between 2000 and 2017, agriculture accounted for roughly two thirds of all methane emissions related to human activities, with the beef and dairy cattle industry a big contributor. In 2017, the Earth's atmosphere absorbed nearly 600 million tonnes of methane. The gas is 28 times more powerful than CO2, a trapping heat over a 100-year span. Now, Moostrel, the company behind the new food supplement, claims that if all cattle in the world ate it, which is about one and a half billion cows, the methane reduction would be equivalent to taking 330 million cars off the road. Sky's Dan Whitehead reports, and we promise he won't milk the cow puns. Chewing the cud in the Cotswolds. But these cows, or more specifically, the methane they emit, is a big problem when it comes to global warming. The solution could lie 100 miles away in a laboratory in the Welsh Valleys. So this is our research and development lab. This is where Mutral is made. Mutral, a British-Swiss firm, is developing its latest version of a food supplement for cows, which it claims can reduce the amount of methane cattle produce by 30%. It is a game changer. Um, the cows are a huge, huge problem. Um, they, are, they put an enormous amount of, of methane into the atmosphere. And uh, what people don't appreciate is that methane is so much more uh, powerful than carbon dioxide, even as a, as a, as a global warming gas. This chamber has no oxygen inside and it's replicating a cow's gut. What Dan is doing is seeing just how effective this new feed is at removing the microorganisms which create methane inside a cow. Mutral hopes companies with big carbon footprints will offset their emissions by buying this food for cattle. It's just one initiative to tackle growing methane emissions. Come on, come on, come on. William Mann's uh, organic cattle are fed just grass <laughs> and hay. He's concerned about the cost of such animal food supplements, but is open to the idea. It would need to be a supplement alongside the grass, um, and if, if, we can, if, if, if they can come up with, with an organic and pasture-fed uh, certified one in time, um, I would be very keen. Cows do improve soil quality, which helps lock carbon in the ground. But changing their diet could help them do more to reduce methane and, in turn, global warming. Dan Whitehead, Sky News, in Abertillery, Wales. And there's more on the climate impact of what you eat on the weekly climate show. It's available from Friday afternoons on Sky News social media channels, our app and our website. Now let's take a look at some of the day's other climate news and Google Earth has released a new time-lapse feature allowing people to explore how our planet is changing. It uses 24 million satellite photos from the past 37 years to show how everything from coastlines to cities, forests and glaciers have transformed over time. 
A $100 million project to pinpoint from space large emissions of greenhouse gases from individual sources like power plants and oil refineries has been announced. The partnership, which includes the state of California and NASA, will launch its first two satellites in 2023. The technology could increase pressure on polluting industries to find and plug leaks of gases such as methane. Scientists are warning only 3% of the world's land is ecologically intact. An intact ecosystem has healthy populations of its original animals and undisturbed habitat. Reintroducing some species like elephants or wolves to damaged areas could restore up to 20% of land. Two large sections of cliff on the Jurassic coast in Dorset have collapsed, the biggest rockfall seen there in 60 years. A section of the beach remains cornered off after massive chunks of rock, some the size of cars, fell onto the sand below. It's thought the recent mixture of warm and cold weather caused parts of the cliff to crack and erode. And two-thirds of people in Britain say they couldn't forgive a friend for dropping litter. New research suggests people want to live more sustainably after a year in lockdown and are even willing to fall out with friends over it. Now, we've been speaking about the importance of US climate envoy John Kerry's trip to China over the past couple of days, but it could be overshadowed by an announcement that the Chinese President Xi Jinping will attend a climate change summit tomorrow with leaders from France and Germany. Now, the virtual meeting will take place as John Kerry is still in Shanghai for talks with his Chinese counterpart about climate change issues. And this all comes ahead of a big summit the US President Joe Biden is hosting on Earth Day next week. So let's speak to our climate correspondent, Lisa Holland. And Lisa, what do you make of this move by the Chinese president? Well, confirmation that Xi Jinping will attend this virtual conference hosted by the French on Friday sends a clear message that the Americans are not the only ones trying to drive climate ambition. I think there is real rivalry between China and the United States over this role of who is the global leader. On the one hand, it is slightly awkward because, of course, uh, America's climate envoy John Kerry uh, is in China at the moment having talks with his counterpart. We're not hearing very much about about that. I think there is a, a real awareness that the Chinese don't want to be seen to be being lectured to by John Kerry. At the same time, you could say, well, look, uh, there needs to be real change and real ambition. So it's all shoulders to the wheel. Um, however, the most important thing is that it does come ahead of this crucial uh, other virtual summit, which will be hosted by the Americans next week. Uh, and there does need to be uh, real change and real commitment from all sides, these nations that are the world world's worst polluters. Uh, and so we will hope that there will be promises from not just the French, the Chinese, but also the Americans that will make a difference. Lisa, thank you. Now, I'm going to take you over to our data dashboard now for a quick look at the real-time power mix, which is up here at the very top. And you can see that today we've got 51% coming from fossil fuels. We've got around 30% coming from renewable sources and meanwhile 19% there from nuclear. And that's because average temperatures remain around one degree below seasonal average, which is increasing national electricity demand. At the same time, wind output has been relatively low over the last couple of days, but solar output is relatively strong. It's currently the highest contributing power source behind gas. And as of midday, southwest England has the lowest electricity carbon intensity. That's the measure of CO2 emissions per unit of electricity used, with well over half its power coming from solar. Now, the latest in our series of Climate Diaries features a survivor of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Inner Braverman has developed a low-cost technology that uses the power of the ocean waves and converts it into clean energy. Hello, my name is Ina Braverman and I'm the founder and CEO of EcoWave Power. I believe that wave power, which can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now, is definitely a great cause. So how does the EcoWave Power technology work? Our floaters are going up and down with the movement of the waves and they're pushing a hydro cylinder, which transmits biodegradable fluid into land-located accumulators. 
In the accumulators, a pressure is being built. The higher the weights, the higher the pressure. This pressure is used to turn the hydro motor, which is turning the generator. We decided to install onshore and nearshore on existing man-made structures, such as piers, breakwaters, jetties, and other types of marine structures. When the waves are too high for the system to handle, the floaters automatically rise above the water level and they stay in the upward position until the storm passes. Although my real passion is wave energy, I truly believe that the solution for climate change and for the world's problem is integrating all renewable energy sources. We need to use solar and wind and wave and any type of renewable energy technology in order to have a 100% renewable energy friendly world. Now, how do you fancy getting your hands on a brand new Tesla Roadster? Average cost £150,000 for less than 20 quid. Well, you can in miniature. Matchbox is releasing a version of the electric vehicle and says all its toys and packaging will use recyclable materials by 2030. Matthew Tompkin, a Matchbox car collector since he was a child, thinks making electric cars as toys is a big step forward. And I think it's so important now that with the world being as it is and climate change and stuff being so important that actually um, it is important that the kids start to see these type of cars and that they are normal to them rather than sort of extra. One of the things I'm trying to instill in, in the boys, especially Ronnie who's seven, is about um, how we cycle, get rid of plastic waste um, and all that sort of stuff and, and he really understands what an electric car is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's be between a Lamborghini and a, and a Tesla Roadster and uh, he's, he's preferring the Tesla Roadster, so I'm happy about that. And that's everything from us for today. On tomorrow's show, we'll be speaking to the director of the Netflix hit My Octopus Teacher about saving the kelp forest off the coast of South Africa where it was filmed. That's on tomorrow's Daily Climate Show. See you then.